If you have ever wondered how a digital clock changes its time seamlessly or how an analog clock's hands move in such a perfect way about an axis and whether such events can be simulated on scratch, then you are at the right place. This video is the first in a three-part series where you will learn how to create an individual digital clock and an individual analog clock on scratch. These clocks will be free to receive the time from scratch servers and will update themselves without any manual interference. It's a very cool project and definitely a fun make. So without any more talk, let's get right into it. Now the Scratch project contains a lot of images and artwork. So rather than creating a new Scratch file on your own and then importing the costumes one by one, it will be much faster if you head over to the downloadable files link in the description below. And once you're there, you can download the file labeled Start. This file contains the costumes of every sprite already set up. And once you open up this file in the Scratch online editor, you will be ready to proceed. We can start in the stage with a when green flag is clicked. Now there are generally two ways to program a game. If we use the first way, that means we have a when green flag is clicked and then a loop. This is typically a forever loop within each sprite. This is much simpler and will work for most smaller games, but it has some major drawbacks. For example, we lose the ability to stop sections of code and execute them sequentially, and we also can't have a roughly uniform speed across the hardware of different computers. The second way involves using game text. This is the way most reasonably complex games are made, and you may be familiar with the term FPS, which is frames per seconds. FPS is simply the number of game ticks that will be executed every single second. By programming in such a way that each sprite performs only certain code within a tick and then waits for other sprites to finish their portion of the tick, the gameplay would become a lot more robust. Some sprites will not function faster than other sprites and this will make the game functional even in cases where bad hardware forces a low FPS. Okay, so as you may have guessed, we'll be using the second method. The first thing you need to do is initialize all of the sprites and make them ready for their function. For this, I will broadcast init and wait. You have to be careful and use the block which says broadcast in wait instead of broadcast. The broadcast in wait message will not complete executing until each of the sprites have their section of the code done. On the other hand, the broadcast message will immediately move on to the next line of code. Next, it is time for the game ticks. Within a forever loop, add a broadcast tick and wait. We can go about this project the following way. In the first video, we can finish setting up the code in such a way that the hour, minute, second, as well as meridian of the day are read from the scratch database and stored in variables that we will set up. In the next video, we can set up the digital clock in such a way that it reads all of the variables and shows the time graphically. In the final video, we can rig the analog clock and structure its hands to move as a function of time. Let's start setting up the variables one by one. First, we can create R. Once a variable is created, Scratch does not mention whether it is a public or a private variable in the variables tab. In order to distinguish between the two, I will use all uppercase letters for public variables and all lowercase letters for private variables. So the R variable will be storing the particular R of the day it is, irrespective of the meridian. When I say meridian here, I'm referring to the anti-meridian and the post-meridian. These are better known as AM and PM. This means, for example, that the R, both in the case of 11 a.m. and in the case of 11 p.m., will be set to 11. The next variable to create will be called minute. It should be fairly obvious what this variable will store. The next variable will be called second. This will be storing the particular second of the minute. After this, we can create a variable called half. This will store the meridian of the day, which is whether it is AM or PM. The final variable that we will create for this video will be called total seconds. This variable will represent the total number of seconds that have passed from the start of the particular meridian. Here the meridian of the day could either be 12 AM or 12 PM, and every passing second after that will be added to total seconds. 
This variable will be basically resetting after a 12 hour pass. We can first hide the total seconds variable and then move on to the thumbnail sprite. This sprite performs basically one function. It shows when nothing is happening and then hides when the program starts. Now we can't really use a show and hide for this simple reason because the commands would only work when put in a script and that script would only run when the green flag is clicked. So to make sure that the thumbnail appears when the stop button is pressed, we will have to use something that's actually a scratch bug. When the stop button is pressed, the graphic effects of all sprites is cleared. This means that their brightness level, blur, transparency, fisheye, etc. are reset to their default values. In the case of the transparency, it means that the sprite becomes completely opaque if it was transparent earlier. What we can do is simply set it to be transparent and then put it in the front layer during both init and tick. When the stop button is pressed, the thumbnail will turn opaque and thus we can see it. When the sprite receives init, we can set the ghost effect to 100 to make it transparent and then go to the front layer. We just duplicate the code and change the message from init to tick to finish this off. It's time to head back to the stage so that we can ensure that the variables are working correctly. If you head out to the sensing tab and grab the current block, you can see that there are a lot of additional options. Using this block, we can retrieve the particular hour, minute and second of the day at any instant of time. When the stage receives stick, we can stack three if-else conditions, one for the hours, one for the minutes and one for seconds. The R script is a little bit complicated, so we can finish the others first. At first thought, this may seem very obvious. It looks as if we can simply set the minute variable to be the current minute and just call it a day. But we have to think a bit further. Since we're using identical graphical numbers for the digital clock, it means that the number always has to have a length of two. For example, if the current minute was eight, then we have to fill in the first place of the digital clock with a zero and only the second one with an eight. So we have to come up with some kind of a mechanism that will switch single digit numbers to double digit ones with a zero at the beginning. Thus, if a current minute is less than 10, we can set minute to the joint value of zero and current minute. If this is not the case, we just set minute to current minute. We can duplicate the minutes code for seconds once again, we face the same constraints, so just changing minute to second at every instance of the if-else condition will be enough. At first, you may think that the code for the R can basically be the same thing. However, there is one major difference, that is, the current R in Scratch is represented in the 24-hour system. Let's take an example. We'd want to represent the time as 5 p.m., however, the current R stores the time as 17. While the time for the first half of the day when it is AM will be the same, the time during the second half of the day will be very messed up. Let's fix this step by step. If the hour is below 10, then we need to add a zero to the left. Here, the half of the day, of course, will be AM. It's important to use lowercase letters here because this will tie into a costume name. In case the if condition is false, then we can nest another if else condition. If the current hour is less than 13, this means that it is either 11 or 12. In both of these cases, we can set the hour variable to current hour and keep the second half as AM. A smart person may come in and say here that the code is wrong because this fails to take into account that all time beyond 12 noon will be PM and not AM. Since I'm including both 11 and 12 under this condition, this is a mistake. Now this is completely correct, 12 hours and 15 minutes for example has to have the half variable set to pm. The reason I did not use below 12 instead of below 13 is because the code after this will not work if the number is 12 exactly. I will be fixing all of this in the next video as this will take quite a bit of time to explain the bug fix. After this we can nest another if else. Here we need to convert the numbers to their values below 12 and then perform the same above features. There are two ways we can do this. We can either subtract 12 from current hour and set it to R, or we can set R to current hour mod 12. Mod will give us the remainder when divided by 12, and this gives us the required result. In case current hour mod 12 is less than 10, then we join current hour to zero. 
Next, we also change the half to PM since this is the second half of the day. In the final case, it means that the time is 23 hours or 11 PM hours. In such a case, we just set R to current R mod 12 and keep the half as PM. Alright, the final thing to do before testing out the code is to set up the total seconds variable. As I mentioned earlier, this variable will not be used in this video or the next one, but only in the final part. I'm doing it here because I want to finish the script fully and it's just one line of code. We can just set total seconds to R multiplied by 3600 plus minute multiplied by 60 plus second. There are 3600 seconds in every hour and 60 seconds every minute. So this will give us the total number of seconds that have passed in the half day. Okay, so that's gonna be all the programming that we'll do in this video. If you test out the code now, you will see the R, minute and second variable taking on the current time. As I mentioned earlier, there will be bugs if your time is somewhere between 12 noon to 1 p.m. But apart from that, the code should work perfectly. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.